Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Coming up this week, we've got two new indoor trainers from Wahoo, a new Trek bike, and some outrageous brake pads as well as well, the Bike Vault and uh, Comments of the Week. And we're going to be discussing if 105 is still the group set of the people. Say what? First up, let's take a look at last week's poll. Yeah, right, so last week we said, is your bike holding you back? <laughs> yeah, I think it is. <laughs> uh, uh, 14% of people said, yes, they blame the bike, but most people, overwhelmingly, 86%, said, no, it's, it's just me. I um, think there's a very honest think, answer. Yeah, very honest yeah. From, our, from our audience. Um, I, I, was, I was surprised by that, but there you go. Most okay. people think that they, their best route to getting faster is... Um, getting fitter. Well, I'm glad we've cleared that up. Yeah. So this week, we're discussing 105 versus Tiagra. You see, with increasing prices and the fact that we've got trickle-down technology coming from the top down to the lower tier group oh, sets. Down. If, if, someone, if, the, if the audience are playing GCN Tech Bingo. Trickle-down tech, then, oh, top of the list. Yeah. Bingo! There we go. <laughs> um, okay, you kind of throwing me there. Yeah. <laughs> we want to sort of discuss if the crown of 105 being groups out of the people is, is going to Tiagra. Yeah. You know what we need to do first? What? We need to break down the costs. Yeah. So, well, retail prices, okay, yeah. of Tiagra is £500, pounds, mm -hmm. and for 105 11-speed mechanical, which they're still making and is still available to buy at the moment, is £596. Pounds. It's a similar sort of ballpark in, in euros and dollars as well, um, a little bit more. And... That, although that's the retail price, if you actually shop around, something I love to do, oh, you, do you, can love get, shopping. I know, you can get them um, for much lower prices than that when you start quickly looking online. So you're looking at, I think, £385 for complete Tiagra mm. I saw and £500 for 105. Yeah, but that's the previous mechanical 105. The latest 105 is DI2. We've got electronic shifting and it's a huge step forward yeah, compared to really the good. previous one. But comes at a price. It's not cheap. It's £1,730. What? Yeah. That's, I mean, that is a lot. And we're aware that most people aren't spending four to five grand on, on, a, on a complete road bike, which well, is what that's roughly going to come in at. You know what we need to do next? We need to break down the weights and look at some of the performance characteristics of this stuff. Let's do it. Mm. Right. So, Shimano says that the whole 105 Di2 group set weighs 3,067.7 grams. Precise. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now, the old 105 uh, R7000, yeah. the 11 speed mechanical, that's a little bit lighter on paper. Yeah. So that's uh, officially 2,978 grams. But you have to add like the cables and the housing to that, at which yeah. point then that does become so a little that, bit heavier. In that sense, Tiagra is what, 300 grams heavier than mechanical 105? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's roughly, yeah, as a rule of thumb, the mechanical versions, 105, 11 speed, Tiagra 10 speed, it's roughly 300 grams heavier for Tiagra. Now I've got some of the yeah. breakdown of the weights of individual components here. Shall I run you through some of those? Yeah, let's, let's Okay, let's, so yeah. in terms of the shifters, we've got 105 is 476 grams, Tiagra 493 grams a pair. So not, not a huge, vast amount. Not huge, yeah. Brakes, um, 105, 388 grams, Tiagra, 260. Yes, so this is interesting. So the Tiagra, this is for the brake calipers on the rim brakes. Yeah. They are lighter, but that's oh. because when uh, Shimano brought out that last generation of dual pivot brakes, which came from Jura Ace and Ultegra and then... Trickle down technology. Up, trickle down. Trickle! <laughs> um, they did actually increase the weight of those calipers yeah. to improve the performance of the brakes. And it is noticeable. They are much better... At, at braking. Yeah. They're just a bit heavier. But I mean, it's not you do all, want good brakes, don't Good you? reminder that it's not always all about weight. Okay. Um, other components we can take a look at. Chain set here. Yep. So 105, 716 grams. Tiagra, 910 grams. That's yeah. comparable crank lengths and chainring sizes. Yeah, actually. both for 50, 34. Yeah. Big, big weight difference there in the crank set. Okay. Front derailleur, 109 grams. 105, 106. Tiagra. Not That's much. That's using the different design, the longer arm, so it makes the shifter action a little bit lighter. Yes. Yeah. The, uh, the, the Tiagra there has that long arm. Yeah, and then <laughs> the long arm. The long arm, and Just then in case the unsure um, what that arm is. Yeah, and then, uh, the one hundred and five mechanical has the little 
boxy one. Okay, a uh, couple other components. Rear mech, 227 grams versus 277. Cassette, 284 versus 308. And the chains between the two, they're going to be pretty much comparable. Yeah, the 105 there. is a mm. little bit lighter, like a couple of grams. Something we should factor in to our sort of considerations is resistance to wear. Mm. There's lots of people out there will say they feel 105 cassettes last a little bit longer. Yeah, I think the mm. chain and the cassette, because of the surface coatings on the, the steel and the alloys they're using, you're using different alloys, mm -hmm. the cassettes and chains do last a bit longer. And it's also something that I find with, if you look after them and clean them, the higher up cassettes beyond that, so things like the, 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 you know, the Ultegra and the Jura Ace cassettes, with those titanium mm. alloys, they, they can last a real long time if you clean them a lot. But the biggest difference between the cassettes and the group sets in general, Tiagra, 10 speed, 105, 11 speed. Yeah, and the new 105, 12 speed. Yeah. So now that 105 is 12 speed and Tiagra's quite old, you can probably, it's a pretty safe bet, isn't it, yeah. that the next Tiagra is going to come out soon and it's probably going to be 11 speed, it's going to go up to 11. Oh, turn it up to 11. Is that a yeah. Spinal Tap reference from you? Yeah. Uh, I had to one, watch. One louder. <laughs> I had to watch the clip earlier. I haven't seen the film yet. Yeah? So. Oh, well, it's, it's a good one. It's oh. a good one. Um, something else to take into consideration is that both the Tiagra and previous Mechanical 105 have got the same cable pull ratios, which might not mean much to some people, but what it does mean is that should you want to use the older Tiagra group set, you can upgrade your rear mech to the 105 version. Yeah, and it still works. Still works, yeah. Clever. Um, all, overall, though, there is a, a weight penalty for, for the complete Tiagra, like we said, around, around 300 grams. Yeah. But nearly 200 grams of that weight difference is in the chain set. That's crazy. Yeah, so it means yeah. that if you were to just upgrade the chain set, you could offset most of that weight difference. Um, and there's a lot of like good 10-speed components around out there, so you could perhaps get an older Ultegra 10-speed like chain set. Ooh. Not used, there's still oh, yeah. new stuff available. You, you, should, you can find these bits. So like a, a new 10-speed uh, Ultegra cassette for like 50, 60 quid, I've seen them online, or the chain set as well. Yeah. And then at that point, you've probably offset most of the weight. You're probably only 50 grams heavier and you've not spent a huge amount of money. That's and actually a really good bit of advice. Yeah, that's what I would probably go for. Okay. So now, most of what we've been talking about has been rim brakes so far. Tiagra also has hydraulic disc brake version available. Should you want to have the most modern braking technology? Do you know what we need to do, though? Go on, ask, tell me. Ask the audience. That's a good point. Has Tiagra usurped 105? Is Tiagra now the group set of the people? That means it's illegally taken its place by force, because we've just spent 10 minutes talking about it, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what you need to do? You need to click on the link in the description down below, head over to the GCN app, and vote on our poll, because we really do want to know if Tiagra's usurped. Yep. 105. So Every day's a school know. day. It's now time for hot and spicy tech. Ollie, kick things off, what have we got? Winter is coming. But fear not, because Wahoo's just unveiled new versions of its Kicker and Kicker Bike indoor smart trainers. Yeah. So these are, it's not a revolution, these are, you know, tweaks and refinements made to the existing Kicker and Kicker Bike to make yeah. them even better. Because according to Wahoo, you know, they say it's already the gold standard of, of indoor training. Um, you've actually done a good first look on, on these two products. So if you want to find out more about them in more detail, check that out. But the big uh, headline for me is that they um, now have Wi-Fi connectivity on them. Yeah. Previously, they just had Bluetooth and AMP Plus. So you would connect these devices to your smartphone, tablet, or laptop, or whatever it is you're using to, to go on Zwift. Whereas now, they actually, the devices themselves, hardline to your Wi-Fi connection. Uh, not hardline, it's not with cable, it's, they just, they, you, you know what I mean. They do we, it we, we all know how Wi-Fi works, don't okay. we? Well, anyway, <laughs> um, this has a number of like big yeah. advantages that you might not realise. So it's said to, to reduce like dropouts and stop dropouts when you're riding. Sometimes your sensors can drop out when you're doing virtual training. Yeah, like the connection between the trainer and the laptop sometimes gets broken, but yeah. you find in almost all cases, Wahoo say they found that the issue arises from the laptop losing its connection with the trainer because it's doing loads of other tasks. It ends up like trying to do updates halfway through your yep. indoor workouts and stuff, and that's what causes a lot of the issues. And the other, yeah, and the other thing is Bluetooth signals can be a bit unreliable, yeah. and they can get interfered with also by things like if you know if someone is in the room next door and they turn on the microwave, yeah. that can interfere with Bluetooth signals or the washing.
all these things can have an impact on it. So if you're particularly into, well, it's good for anyone, but yeah. especially good, I think, for e-racers. Yeah. Because if you're in a crucial moment of your e-race, and you it cuts know, out... You do not want a signal drop out. No. Um, it's also said to make the responsiveness of the trainer more responsive That's as well. That's actually a really good point. So like when you go to sprint, yeah. it's more like it then goes rather so, than... So Wahoo is saying it speeds up the connection from your trainer to your laptop by 65%. I mean, we're talking small changes, but, I mean, it, if you're racing, it could be a difference between winning and losing. Yeah, plus it does all your firmware <coughs> updates and stuff automatically now because it connects to Wi-Fi. Yeah, um, not just Wi-Fi. We've also got something called ERG Easy Ramp Mode where if you ever use the ERG Control Mode on your trainer, the new feature means should you have to stop halfway through your interval, it doesn't just pile the resistance back on and make it a right slog. Yeah, it, it feeds it back in over like ten seconds, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. hard to it's hard to understand for people who've not experienced this. But if you have used erg mode on a smartphone, yeah. you will know what we're talking about. It gets exponentially hard to get going again. Yeah, um, so yeah. We've also got a built-in odometer. And you keep track of how far you've ridden on your indoor trainer. Now the updates are kind of like mimicked across for both the kicker. <laughs> and the kicker bike as well. Yeah. Hmm. Cool thing on the kicker bike though I saw is that you can tune in the app the gearing of the kicker bike. Yeah. Like so you can make virtual. So like if you have to, to mimic your actual bike in real life. So for example if you've got like a massive chain ring on your TT bike. Like you. <laughs> you can uh, program that into the kicker bike. Oh, yeah, to change cool. like the feelings that you get. Yeah. I really like that. Uh, oh, and they're also compatible with Windows, Android and Apple. This all sounds fantastic Ollie. Want to hear us with some prices? Yeah. Well, you know, we often get criticised for only giving prices in the king's English pound sterling. Yeah. Uh, so, I've got all the prices for you. All of the prices? All of the prices. Um, US dollars for the yeah. kicker, 129999. That's not one, 129,000. That's uh, 1,299. Um, and 399999. So $4,000. You've got a load of massive list here. Should we go, go, go on quick for Euro, stats? Euros, $1,299. Uh, and uh, $3,999. Japanese, Japanese yen, yen. 172,550,000 yen. Japanese yen. For I, the, feel for like the kicker. I feel like we have jumbled this up somewhat. So what we'll do? Canadian we... dollars. 1,879 Canadian dollars for the kicker. To make life easy. Do you want Australian dollars? No. Three. I'm oh, joking. Oh. Nah. 1,799 on Australian dollars. Please, can we put the prices up on screen? <laughs> Do you want Zimbabwean dollars as well for the kicker? Naturally, yeah. Okay, so it is 465,870 Zimbabwean dollars if you want a Wahoo kicker. Glad we cleared that up. Yeah. Cool. Um, next time in Hot Tech, we've got a new bike from Trek. This is the new Damani. Have a little look, see what you think of this. So Trek have finally released the new Domani, which keen viewers may recall we spotted way, 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 way back in spring at Paris Bay. In fact, the winner of the women's race, Lisa Longaborghini, was spotted riding the new Domani. So for those of you that don't know, the Domani is Trek's endurance-based road bike. We've got a more stable geometry and comfort features built into the bike to help make it a smoother ride. Yeah, and some key details on this new one. Mm -hmm. It's said to be 300 grams lighter, which yeah. is, that's a lot. Normally bikes are like 50 grams lighter than the mm. previous one. 300 is a lot, and the, the way they've shaved this weight is primarily in simplifying the bike. So they've got rid of the suspension element, which was at the front, which is, well, Trek call it their ISO speed, uh, Coupler. Yeah, yeah they, they had one at the front of the bike and they've got rid of that. And then the one that they have at the rear of the bike, that used to be adjustable. That used to have a slide that would go up and down so that you could tune the amount of suspension sort of travel and comfort that you had. But in reality, most people never actually adjusted it. No. So now it's, it's not adjustable lighter and you just get you get what you're given. Basically. You get what you're given. Yeah. We've got massive tyre clearance too, so if you're running a 38mm tyre, you've got 6mm clearance all the way around the tyre and the frame. We've also got integrated storage in the down tube as well. They also somewhat predictably say it's more aero than the previous version, but this does make sense because it now does have cam tail tube profiles throughout the bike. Um, and if you would like to know pricing... Oh, I'd love to know well, pricing. It's available in, in a range of builds uh, with different components and different frames. So there's the SL frame 
frame set, which is the sort of lower level of carbon, yeah. the SLR, and also the RSL, which is their top of the range. And it's from £3,300 through to £12,500. So pretty, spri pretty spicy for the... Pretty spicy. Pretty dare, spicy for the top of the range one. Dare I say, is it starting to look a little bit kind of like a all-road gravel bike? It is. It's like a road-focused mm. gravel bike. That tyre yeah. clearance and, the, and the, the little storage box. Say, so, oh, by the way, just, I was just thinking, I might have forgotten an important currency. Um, did you oh, yeah. want to know the price of the kicker in Djibouti and francs? I thought you'd never tell us. It's, well, it's 229,000 Djibouti and francs. Got you covered, Djibouti. I'm going to have to take your words for that. Yeah. I've no idea. I'll have to fact check it later. Yeah. Um, next on Hot Tech, we've got some new brake pads from Absolute Black, a company renowned for making some pretty sort of out there products, shall we say? Take a look at these. Let's hit you with the stats. So these fancy schmancy brake pads from Absolute Black are 50 pounds a go. What? Well, 100 pounds if you want both front I mean, and rear brakes. Naturally, you would want front and rear brakes, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah. And the reason why they're expensive is because they're said to contain graphene. They're made from graphene? No, Alex. Chemistry time. So the graphene is said to be incorporated oh. into the brake pad compound itself, yeah. and that's said to help with heat conductivity. And you also have the high surface area of that cooling fin thing built onto the pad. Yeah, so the, to help with cooling, high surface area is the, the biggest thing that's going to help, because the cooling fins are really pronounced on these brake pads, aren't they? Yeah, and yeah. cooling and heat dissipation is one of the main things you want from, from brakes. That's the main sort of engineering thing they need to overcome. But another interesting thing is that having graphene incorporated into the, the pad compound yeah. rather than traditional sort of copper sintered pads, mm -hmm. Absolute Black reckon that this helps make your rotors last longer. Okay. They also say that it's much quieter, yeah. which we all want quieter disc brakes. We all want quieter disc brakes. And they say that there's an, it, it, well, a useful pollution aspect to it as well. So a really underrated cause of pollution is brake dust. It's I can a go big with that. problem with cars, mm. and, and copper sintered pads produce quite harmful pollution. Absolute Black say that the pollution from um, a graphene pad is, is, is less and less harmful. Well, you see the brake dust I don't building know if up that's on true. your. You see the brake dust building up on your calipers, don't you? Yeah, you see that fine black yeah. dust. That, that's, that's bad for the environment. Cool story for you. Well, actually, it's not cool. When um, back in the day, when I was fixing cars, old boy worked in the garage. Eric, his name was, really nice guy. Oh, God, I used to get so angry, right? remove the drum brakes on the back of a car when you're doing a service, and get his airline, blow all of the brake dust out, and it would be like a plume of smoke filling up the workshop. I'd lose my <laughs> with him. It's, you can't breathe that stuff in. Yeah, it's bad for you. It's bad Real for bad. you. Um, well, I, if all this is true, um, I, I would love to try these brake pads out. I think they could be great. But they certainly look the part, don't yeah, they? Ho yeah, hopefully, it's, hopefully they are what they say. But... Um, Another interesting thing that we should mention is, is Porsche have a, an amazing brake solution, which oh, hasn't yeah. made its way onto bikes yet. But if you ever see a Porsche with white brake calipers, that's because they have dustless brakes. And they're a special upgrade you can get, and they make tungsten carbide brakes, um, which don't produce dust and perform better than a standard steel rotor. So that is um, so I wonder yeah, if that's pretty cool. There's lots of areas of technology that I think we might eventually see come onto our bikes, which is really interesting stuff. Yeah. Um, right, more hot tech next week. It's now time for comments of the week. Cue the jingle. Comments of the week. Um, I should stop you there. Yeah. I did just say Porsche. Should have. I should have said Porsche. You are correct, on... correct pronunciation. I also swore. So sorry, but we go, both got carried away there, didn't right. we? Right. Well, it's raining back in now for comments. Comments of the week. time. <laughs> um, Philips TV first. Yeah. Underneath. Oh, your dork disc removal video from Monday. Yeah. Um, Ollie, ha Ollie has this capacity of making even the most useless how-to videos fun and entertaining. Thanks for calling my video useless. It wasn't useless, but it was fun and entertaining. Okay. Thanks, thanks for that, though. Backhanded okay, compliment. Yeah, backhanded compliment. Oh, thanks for that. John Glass, yeah. what does he say? Well, he said, a couple of observations, somewhat humorous, also on the dog disc video. Yeah. One, the fact that this video went from being an almost throwaway comment on Thursday's tech show to a full video on Monday that's quite funny. Yeah. And then he goes, and two, at the end, Ollie ripped out a dorky quote from a dorky movie, thus showing his dork credentials. I am actually secretly a dork, don't tell anyone. 
probably told everyone now. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> more <laughs> comments underneath the episode one of the Super Light Bike Upgrade video. Yeah, if you haven't okay. seen this, make sure yeah. you check it out. And, oh, Please we've do. got to show him. Got to oh, show don't, him. don't, just a quick sneak peek. Sneak peek. Pixelate oh. it if we need to. What? <laughs> oh, God, I feel a bit nervous now. So, um, the, yeah, the go on. T TFL Spitfire. Is that Transport for London Spitfire? <laughs> I think it must be. I mean, if TFL had Spitfires, that would be incredible. Yeah. Oh, God, I get an all-day saver. But anyway, it's, uh, <laughs> it feels like you guys really listened to the audience after the last survey. More budget, maintenance, bike build videos is what they want. Well, we do our best to try and keep everybody Yeah, we happy. do listen to yeah. clients, and that is a good example. I'm this series is going to be good. Yeah. I really like it. Next comment from Leslie Smith. They say, enjoying this more than other GCN videos, but I don't know why. I'm probably... I'd probably draw the line at paint removal. That Sorry, oh. Leslie. You've probably Sorry, just Leslie. seen what we just showed you there. <laughs> um, <I'm, laughs> that comment ends. I'm assuming you're going to cycle in a G-string as that like her weighs a few grams. Uh, well... Yeah. How many likes do we need for me to do the hill climb in a G-string? Million? I think if this, I think Tech Show, if this Tech Show gets 5,000 likes, no. Alex has to cycle in a G-string. Not more than 5,000. <laughs> more than 5,000. No one needs to see that. Oh, yeah, we do. No one needs to yeah, see that. Yeah, we do. Okay, a few more than 5,000. <laughs> Uh, I've got a couple of comments from last week's show. Core Creek Productions says, I got into road cycling during the pandemic and purchased an entry-level aluminium frame bike with bottom-of-the-line components. This comment is about, is your bike holding you back? Oh. Um, and it said, it served me well for two years, but I found myself derailing often and the shifting system was definitely not very refined. That was uh, the impetuous for me to seek out my newer bike, yeah. carbon fiber frame, 105 components. Sure, I'm definitely faster on the new bike and it definitely feels quicker and lighter, but the re reliability and smoother shifting made it more worthwhile. Uh, unfortunately, my local bike shop uh, sees me less these days since my new bike is more reliable. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um, one last comment. We've picked out lots this week. So it's from DPW. They say, was sitting at a red light in my car and saw a 105 group set. I rolled down the window and shouted, group set of the people. He chuckled and shook his head just as the light changed. I, changed. I hope you had a great ride. I think he did. Yeah. I also, uh, I, it's uncertain whether or not he knew the reference you were making to, to GCN yeah. tech or, or whether just he just thought, heckled. You just thought you were a lunatic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, fantastic Ooh. comments this week. Keep the comments coming as, as always, yeah. and we'll pick the best ones out for next week. Time for the bike vault. God, my favourite part of Where's the show. The bell? Have I ever told you it's my favourite part yeah, of the show? Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, oh. Go on, what have we got? Right, we have got Dutz 91. This is the most super nice bike. It's a Bianchi Ultra XR4 Disc Ultegra Di2. That is a beautiful looking bike. Well presented. Um, Biggie Smalls, cranks not quite aligned. The wheels aren't quite, quite aligned. That aligned. front wheel could just be do with rotating slightly. Important question. Real or artificial grass? That is exactly what I was thinking. Mm. Um, yeah, a nice, nice looking barbecue in the background there. Oh. Fence could do with a bit of a bit of Ron seal. Yeah. Um, um, I think that's fake grass. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. I'm assuming they've fake. got um, maybe couple of dogs, some pets maybe. They wee on the fake grass, that's not good news. Not good news. Uh, I'm going I'm going super nice. Though. Super nice. Yeah. Um, first up this week, we've got Aussie One with a Cervelo S5 from 2019 on the beach with, that is definitely not a shadow yeah, stand. Yeah, that shadow stand appears to have malfunctioned. <laughs> Turned into a bag. Its cloaking device <laughs> has malfunctioned and you can see its true size. Um, I do like the bike though. I do, but it's a nice... Deep on the back, shallow on the front. Yeah, it's just a nice from Who's me. Who's that photo bomber in the background as well? Someone just enjoying the lovely sunset. And it looks like there's some people swimming. Mm. There you go. Yeah, nice. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Oznat Champ... Oznat National Champton. Yeah, and this is a... What, landscape tandem. tandem. Oh, I quite like this. Oh. Aero. I'm going super nice on that. Don't see enough tandems. Both cranks for Alliance in Biggie Smalls. Yeah. All right. Super Look at nice. that massive, massive brake rotor on the front. Look at that. That is a big boy. Yeah. Right. Super nice. um, next, we've got CS627 WW2NJ. 
catchy username with yeah. a Kinesis Athen. Athian, sorry, disc. disc. Titanium. Oh, it's in the wild. This is nice. A little bit dark, but I think this could be a really nice bike. 105 mechanical previous generation. That is definitely groups out of people. It is. Should we, should we fist bump oh, yeah. that? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Now he's lined up his wheels. Yeah. It's a little bit, little bit underexposed, but I can go with that because it's in the woods. And I like their matchy matchy handlebar and saddlebag. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go super nice. On that super one. nice. Yeah, we're feeling wow. generous this week. Uh, Marcus up. Gaxon with his Vilio Cento Dieci. Are you Italian? I thought Alan had come to join us then from yeah, GCN he Italia. He taught me how to say it. Yeah. Uh, what do you think to his Cento Dieci? <laughs> I like this. Yeah. Most importantly, I'm impressed how they've got the bike in that position without scuffing the wall. I'm impressed that they, when they sort of built that house, they built that little alcove to be per the bike perfectly the width of the bike. Yeah, and speaking to the architect for building a new house, strange request, I like this really small little gap, yeah. perfect for my bike to fit in. Yeah, super nice, I think. Um, valves are aligned. It's, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's super nice. This is an incredible wig. Who we got next? Um, next up, we've got JY dot cooped with a ga I've Gaster never heard of this. A Gaster it's Boy a Gaster PGC Boy. dash one alpha. What on earth is that? Is it made from actual wood? It does look like it's made from wood, doesn't it? I think it is made from wood. Yeah, wood bike, walnut, comfortable. It's got those it's performance. It's got those crazy white tires on it. It's so weird. It's so out there. It's so different. And the photo is really good quality. Yeah, and it's um, definitely real grass in the background. Yeah, it'd be better if it had a shadow stand, but I'm I'm still inclined to go super nice on that one. We're being super generous this week. Yeah, I think that is a super nice. Um, it's just so weird. I've never seen anything like it. It is super out, and I'm sort of strangely drawn to it. Yeah. Okay, super nice. That's I like, the grain of, I like the grain of the wood. Mm. Did we get any dogs this week? No dogs, thankfully. Well, there were. I just had to really, <laughs> had to really refrain from putting them in. I'm going to submit a dog next week. Um, but if you want to keep submitting them, I love it when I go into the bike vault and see all the pictures. The it's dog fantastic. Um, that's it. Bike vault over for this week. That means the GCN Tech Show is over for this week. It's a sad state of affairs. I'm sorry that it's ended. We'll see you next week, shall if we? If you want to see Alex riding in a thong, and his hill climb bike, a G-string, yeah. then you know what I do, like this video, what are we saying, 5,000? I reckon 5,000 likes. I'm being no part of this. 5,000 likes. 10,000. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of an obscurely <laughs> high number. Incredible. Do you reckon we could get a GCN branded thong? Oh, we already have one. Oh, cool, yeah. Is it washed? They're available in shop.globalcycling.network. Mm. Right, we've gone on for long enough. See you guys next week. Bye. <laughs>